The Projection of the Astral Body by Muldoon and Carrington Chapter 11 How to Induce Incapacity During natural sleep, we know that the physical body is incapacitated more or less, but in order to make this incapacity more pronounced, the heartbeat must be slowed down. I have already explained how I stumbled upon this fact and that I devised a method of voluntarily slackening the rate of the pulse. Incidentally, the exercise for slowing the pulse also causes concentration and relaxation, thus eliminating the necessity of special exercises for each of these factors. The first thing which you are to do upon retiring for the night or retiring at any other time is to assume a comfortable horizontal position preferably on your back if you cannot possibly tolerate lying upon your back then lie upon your right side I am presuming that you are now reclining in a horizontal position upon your back with your hands lying at your side first take a deep breath hold it for a second then try to force that breath into the pit of your stomach so that the diaphragm bulges out at that point. Then exhale, forcing all of the air out of your lungs. Repeat this about six or eight times. This is for the purpose of relaxing the solar plexus. A word of advice in this connection from Mr. Carrington's book on yoga will fit nicely here. It is very essential to feel the relaxation of the solar plexus so that you can consciously feel that it opens like a flower just below the spot where the ribs divide. If that be tense, it will stop your development until you can relax it. The thing to do is to concentrate and get enough control so that you can feel it and then you can relax. The plexus itself is like a great octopus. It is the biggest nerve center in the body, aside from the brain, and it is the ruler of the sympathetic system, the digestive and other vegetative functions. So for that reason, the stomach should not be full when these yoga exercises are undertaken, because it would press against the plexus and against the heart. That is one of the reasons why it is very important that the stomach should be empty and the food very light. Next. Close your eyes and picture yourself in your mind. Now, starting at the top of your head, think of your scalp and try to move it, tensing the proper muscles. Next, think of your jaw and tense and relax it a few times. Next, think of your neck. Tense and relax the muscles in it a few times. Think of your upper arm, then your lower arms. Then grip your fists and relax them. Then starting at the base of your neck, go downward, thinking of each part of the body in turn and trying to tense the muscles at each particular spot until eventually you are tensing and relaxing your toes like a cat tensing and relaxing its paws while purring. Now concentrate upon your heart, not with tension of mind, but think of that organ with relaxed thought. You will presently notice its pulsations and be able to feel them at that spot in your chest. Keep your mind centered upon these pulsations until they are very pronounced, until you can both feel and hear them distinctly. These are the same pulsations which you feel in the back of your head when you are projected and within chord activity range and they are in fact the only genuine physical feelings you possess while projected unless you feel the weight of the bed covering over you etc that is when within cord activity range a duplicate sensation permits the pulsations to be felt as they are in the physical counterpart and as you can now feel them by the concentration upon your heartbeat the easiest way is to lie upon the left side, but not the preferable way.
After you have acquired the ability to lie still and both feel and hear your heartbeat within your chest, which you will, no doubt, acquire in one or two trials, your next step is to be able to feel and hear the pulsations in any part of your body by concentrating upon that particular spot. I am now assuming that you are lying according to my instructions and while we are in a relaxed condition of mind can both feel and hear your heart pulsations. Listen to them, the pulsations, closely. They are going thump, 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 thump. Now shift your center of concentration to your neck. You can feel your heart beating in your neck. Thump, thump, thump. You can feel the pulsations in your neck. Shift your thought to your cheeks and you will soon feel them there. Just as soon as you have pronounced pulsations in your cheeks, then go to the top of your head and center your thought on that steady thump, thump, thump. Now you feel them there. Now that you can feel the pulsations in your scalp, shift your thought back again over each particular spot the cheeks, the neck, the chest and keep going on downward. Now you can feel them in the pit of your stomach. Do not shift your concentration until they are very pronounced. They are there. Thump, thump, thump. Now you can concentrate a little further down in the lower abdomen. That is an easy place to feel the pulsations almost as easy as feeling them in your neck. Now that they are perfectly plain, you can concentrate upon your thighs, both at once. There you feel the thump, thump, thump. Now concentrate upon the calves of your legs. And as soon as you can feel the pulsations regularly and plainly, concentrate upon your feet the very soles of your feet and you will be able to feel the heart pulsations very plainly in your feet just by thinking about them. Now go back to your calves again. There you feel them. Now go back to your thighs again. There are the pulsations. Next concentrate on your right thigh and forget about the left one. See, you can feel the pulsations of your heart anywhere you concentrate. The next time you have cold feet, literally, try to increase the circulation in your feet by doing what you have just done. If you will concentrate upon the medulla oblongata region and cause the pulsations to be felt there, you will know exactly how the pulsations feel at that point through the astral cable to the projected phantom. One word of advice before going further. If you are a victim of heart disease, do not attempt astral projection. For the heart is a vital factor and often runs very low during a projection. And as you know, the welfare of the physical mechanism during the projection of the astral body depends upon the function of respiration. On the other hand, if your heart is reasonably sound, there is nothing to be alarmed at in this suggestion. Now that you have the knack of feeling your heart's pulsations in any part of your body through concentration, the next step is to be able to reduce the speed of the pulsations, which is not difficult to do. What is desired in astral projection is a slow and steady heartbeat. During your concentration upon the organ, assume that you are one intelligence and that it is another, and that it can understand your thought and obey it, for that in reality is about the true situation. The heart is controlled by an intelligence behind it, the subconscious intelligence. Your thoughts your concentration can be considered another intelligence. So if you desire to decrease or increase the speed of the heart, assume that it is governed by intelligence.
Perhaps you have tried to drive thoughts or directions into your subconscious mind and have afterwards said to yourself, how do I know whether or not my suggestion convinced the innate intelligence? Well, with your heart you can tell. If you concentrate upon it, thinking that it is beating slower and slower, faster or faster, as the case may be, and it obeys your suggestion, then you know that your suggestion has reached the controlling intelligence. And further, if you know the mood your conscious mind is in when it is able to control the heart, then you know what mood that the mind should be in at any other time when you wish to think thoughts into your subconscious mind. Many people become annoyed when they think that their subconscious mind will not obey the very first conscious direction it is given. Many do not like the job of repeating and repeating over and over an affirmation before the subconscious mind will obey. But think a minute. What would happen if the controlling intelligence did act upon the very first affirmation? Suppose you should think your heart had stopped, and suppose the innate intelligence should immediately obey that suggestion. Wouldn't that be a fine mess? Fortunately, the subconscious mind is not so easily controlled. Yet, it is not very difficult to persuade it to slacken or speed up the heartbeat. To resume, we are now supposing that you are lying upon your back, relaxed, with your arms at your sides and that you have acquired the ability to feel your heart's pulsations in any part of your body. Now you are concentrating upon your heart again. And if it is not steady, you are to tell it in your mind that it is steady. And you are to catch the rhythm of the proper beat and beat time in your mind. Concentrating upon the thump of the heart at the proper rhythm. Keep this exercise up until your heart is beating steadily. Now, if it had before been unsteady and you have steadied it, or if it be naturally steady and healthy, you are now ready to concentrate upon a slower beat. Think only of these pulsations. Concentrate upon these pulsations, which you feel in your chest and in your heart. Beat time to them in your mind even allowing your head to move slightly at each beat, if it be inclined to. After keeping up this true rhythm for several minutes, begin beating time in your mind, just a little slower, thinking that the heart is beating a little more slowly. Do not stop concentrating in order to determine whether or not the heart is obeying your suggestion, for you will be able to know this fact in your mind. Continue your concentration in this manner until you have the heart beating at the speed at which you wish it to beat. This is not nearly as difficult to accomplish as you might think, and most people, without a doubt, will be enabled to do this after a very few trials.